Join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter with Good Day Dakota. Well, it's 6.43. Welcome back. It's been a problem for the last several weeks, and it's something that has impacted many with respiratory issues. Yeah, that's right. New this morning, meteorologist Amber Wheeler is here to explain why that smoke has arrived from the wildfires over a thousand miles away and how it affects North Dakota and why it's so dangerous to your health. Hi, Amber. Well, Tim and Alicia, you know, we know warm air rises. And so when the heat from the wildfire rises, it takes the ash plumes with it. And that can travel through the jet stream and catapult, uh, be catapulted thousands of miles away. Take this example for, uh, for example. This was from Noah. This was from uh, September 5th of last year. Smoke has traveled from the West Coast and all the way to the East Coast here. And you can kind of see that on this side satellite image. Pretty remarkable there. Uh, now, there are a few ways that smoke could be brought down to the surface. Now, I've got a few ways here. One is going to be cold fronts. Of course, as the cold front moves through, it pulls some of that smoke down. We saw that over the weekend. High pressure can also tug on that smoke as this is when air sinks as well. Now, another way that smoke can uh, be lowered to the ground is when we lose that daytime heating. That uh, heating causes the convection. And when we have a lack of that from the overnight cooling, that allows some of that ash to fall to the ground as well. Now, when smoke sinks to the ground, it poses its own health risks. Sometimes you can have immaculate health and still be affected by wildfire ash. It isn't just trees and brush that are on fire. It's homes, businesses and cars filled with chemicals, paint and oil. You name it. It's burning right now. Some of the toxic gases in wildfire smoke are methane and carbon monoxide, and this is why the air is monitored constantly to give you a heads up on the quality of what you're breathing. Now, right now we're lucky enough to have good, OK, air quality. But over the weekend, I'm sure you guys remember uh, that we did have unhealthy air for all. Mm. And so uh, it was really tough to be outside. You can almost smell yeah. that smoke. I can only imagine what it's like to be closer to that. Yeah, I can only, you know, I, I try to put it in perspective For sure. and say, you know, it's bad here, but I'm sure it's, we know it's worse there. So the, uh, you showed that map of all that smoke over the, you know, mm -hmm. the entire midsection of the country there, but that was up high, right? Yeah. I mean, so it doesn't always fall to mm -hmm. the ground. So again, you saw those reasons why it does come to mm -hmm. the ground. You know, you have yep. different fronts, you know, sometimes right. it'll, it depends on also how heavy it is or how thick it is sure. up there. Sometimes we don't have it hit the ground, but we, if you look up, you have that haze in mm -hmm. the sky, that filter you look at the sun. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it's a really interesting uh, thing to try to forecast because sure. there, we don't, we have experimental smoke models but then you have to actually watch how is this behavior of this right. smoke right. what's happening after There's this so cold front moves through it's pretty it. fascinating and it's something that can be a little uh, a little scary if you have respiratory right. issues and of as course well. the fires are still burning they're still burning and of course coming up on my next forecast I do have a map showing you where that smoke is in the upper atmosphere right now okay that's coming up next stay with us